Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Last few days I've been playing a lot of Resident Evil 5. I've played it before, uh, I've beat it before, but I've been playing it again because I love the Resident Evil series. Really looking forward to the new Resident Evil game I've got it prepaid for. However, uh, if you might notice on your Xbox 360, or at least on mine, there's only one USB port for a controller. My controller is actually toast. My USB controller anyway. And so I had this, this wireless controller. And I uh, used Duracell for a while. Duracell batteries are expensive, so then I tried these rechargeable ones, and they suck. They suck. Even when fully charged, they last for maybe an hour. They are bad batteries. And so I'm frustrated. I'm going and I'm going to modify them with supercapacitors. Now I might catch a little bit of flack here, because you might say, if you add a supercapacitor bank to that, it's not going to be wireless anymore. Fair enough. It's not. But I like lying down in the bed and uh, playing my game. So if, it, if it's adding a little bit of wires to it, to a charger box, and that means that I never, ever have to pay for batteries ever again, hell yes, I'm going to do that. And I hope that you enjoy this video because I'm going to do it right now with you guys. This is my uh, supercapacitor flashlight charger board and two 400 fare 2.7 volt caps in series, giving me a series bank of... Uh, 200 farads at 5.4 volts max. What I've done is, uh, typically this board charges these caps to 5.33 volts. I've modified the program in the pick so that it charges to 3.75 volts. And then when I'm done, well, so every time I plug it in, what will happen is the relay will turn on, it will charge to 3.75 volts roughly, and then it will turn it off. It will charge through this current limiting resistor. Once the relay shuts off, there's no back powering from the capacitors through the uh, board. I'm quite happy about that aspect of the design, but I knew that there was another way I could use this supercapacitor flashlight charger board. So basically, plug it in, leave it, after, depending on how much charge is already on the capacitors, less than an hour, fully charged, and it'll last hours and hours and hours. Now, these, these capacitors can be charged in its bank configuration up to 5.4 volts, but I'm not 100% sure that I want to put 5, 5 volts on the uh, power leads of the wireless controller. It does say in the back uh, five up to, uh, like, there's a five volt configuration, but I think that's for uh, a battery adapter. So I'm going to be putting these on the actual leads. And a fully two fully charged Duracell batteries can, in series could be anywhere from uh, three volts to 3.7 volts. I tried this at 3.9 volts, no problem. But again, I'm not going to. Tr I don't want to fry anyone's controller. I don't want to fry my controller. So I think about 3.75 volts is pretty good. So again, modified this. I'll plug this in, and I'll show you how this works. Right now, uh, on the output terminal block, we can see how much uh, voltage is on the capacitors by placing the red probe on our cap plus output and our black probe on one of the ground outputs. So roughly 3.38 volts. So I'll plug it in using my 9 volt. Uh, one amp power supply. The LED should flicker on, relay should then turn on. Once that reaches about set 3.75 volts, I'm going to completely modify it so it's tuned well. If it's about 3.75 volts, it, the relay will turn off. That LED will continue to flash until you've disengaged the power supply, but that's when the capacitors are charged. So, you heard the relay. Let's watch the voltage go up. So it's slowly charging. It's a big series bank. We're charging it at about 500 milliamps. So we could be charging them more, but I had to put a special current limiting resistor on the board, and the current limiting resistor does get hot. Now, in this instructable, you'll also, I'll also be posting the assembly video for the charger board, and it'll show you how you can use it as a supercapacitor flashlight if you want. But this is specifically modified for the code in the PIC, so that it charges to a lower voltage that's compatible with your uh, Xbox 360 controller. So once this is charged, I'm going to modify my Xbox 360 controller and I'm going to connect it to this. So now it's fully charged. Let's see the voltage on the caps. When it becomes charged, you hear the relay click off and then again that LED will just continue to flash until you disengage the power supply here. 3.72 volts. So I'll fine tune that, but uh, that's pretty much a perfect voltage. So now that our cap bank's charged, 
but we're we're good. The uh, we're going to mount this on a fixture that's going to connect to our Xbox 360 controller. This is the back of our Xbox 360 controller. This is this is our battery holder. We're still going to want to keep that. Now, what you can do is you have a different op a few different options here. If you don't want to do any modifications, any hard modifications to your board, you can use banana wires or banana connect or sorry uh, alligator connectors to your two ports here. However, I do want to warn you that if you short your supercapacitor bank directly, you can cause a fire because there's so much current. You're not going to shock yourself, but there's so much current going through a direct short on a supercapacitor supercapacitor bank that it will cause fire. So you have to be very careful. I don't suggest using um, I just don't suggest using alligator clips. I just suggest using a direct solder joint. But again, it's your controller. You do what you want. I'm not going to be responsible for your damaged Xbox controllers uh, or any fires that you may cause due to your carelessness. Anyway, so if you actually look at the battery holder, it says this is your negative, this is your positive. So if you fit it in this way, which is the way it goes in, that is an indicator that this is your negative lead and this is your positive lead. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drill a little hole in this, and I'm going to put a red wire and a yellow wire. I would be using a black wire for negative, but I don't have enough black wire. And I'm going to fit it through this by drilling a little hole in it, putting a little piece, a little bit of glue in there, and then I'm going to solder those two wires to this so I can fit this in here and have lo two long wires going out, which will fit to my charger board. So I'm going to do that now, and I'll show you. So what I've done is drill a little hole and placed my yellow ground and my positive wire through it giving it off maybe an inch inch and a half of wire for the, for the internal wiring what I will be doing is soldering it to the two battery leads and then closing it up in a minute in this case as I said my yellow is my ground and my red is my positive positive. and uh, if you look at the battery symbols you might not be able to see it very well but that's negative that's positive so your positive is on the left and your negative is on the right. So in this case, I'm going to solder my yellow wire to the right and my red wire to the left. Then I'm going to close it up. So I'll do that and I'll show you. So it's soldered into place. You want to make sure that there's absolutely no chance of those two leads shorting against each other. So the solder joints have to be strong and you have to apply quite a bit of heat to the battery connectors to make the, the solder flow. I'll close it up. And that's ready to go. So just make sure that if you ever open it again, which you might, that you don't yank on it. So that's good. So now what you'll notice is we've got a lot of wire here. I like to have a bit more than a meter. And I'll make knots, just to, or you can braid it if you want. So now all we have to do is wire this to our charger board. So I've tied my negative yellow lead to the furthermost ground contact, my cap plus uh, pin to the positive of my uh, wireless controller. Now you can add a switch here if you want, but I want to make stress again, do not short these leads. You short these leads, you're shorting the, the capacitor bank, and that's a fire hazard. You can cr you, the, if you short the, the wires on the capacitor bank, your wires are going to set on fire. So keep those away. Keep those isolated from each other. So I've pressed the button and it actually activated my Xbox 360 in the other room and we're <laughs> so it works great. So next I'm going to mount it on a fixture just quickly and then we'll test it. Ideally a project box would be much better than this as a, as a mounting setup. Uh, but just to show you, like I just used a little bit of hot glue to mount down the supercapacitors and a little bit of hot glue to mount down my charger board. So every, anytime I want to charge it up, all I have to do is plug it in. Charging commences. And then once it's done, you'll hear the relay click off. That LED will continue to blink. It shouldn't take very long to charge up to 3.6 volts. And every time this charges up, hours and hours of gameplay. Connected right to your uh, Xbox 360. Now you don't have to use this kind of wire either. You can use uh, you can use cable. 
as long as you just make sure to be very careful follow the instructions on how to put this module together follow the instructable video because there are some very important key features to it um, be creative in how you mount it and enjoy your gameplay so once this is charged which should only take a, like a minute or two what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it into the other room and I'm going to test out my new Xbox 360 forever rechargeable power supply now again you might there we go it's fully charged so I can just keep that plugged in there's no power consumption right now not very much at all micro like like milliamps fully charged you might think oh that's so clunky and whatnot and it is it's clunky but I'll never have to pay for batteries ever again I'll never be have to you know, wait hours and hours for my stupid rechargeable batteries to recharge so let's go play Resident Evil 5. It's awfully bright in the apartment today. Uh, by pressing the button, the uh, Xbox 360 automatically turns on. It's already on because I tested in the other room. But as you can see, it connects with the system. I'm sitting down comfortably. And uh, let's play some Resident Evil 5. So again, when this runs out after hours of gameplay, just plug it back in and you can use it again you don't need 400 uh, farad capacitors in series you can use bigger ones or smaller ones as long as the rated for 2.7 volts each and you have them in series anyway that's my video hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching everyone I'll have the booster board and the capacitors available or charger board available at engineeringshot.com and electroniclessons.com in a day or two take care